everyone, and thanks for joining me today as I show you about Zentech Consultants' newest Zen estimating set, the Concrete Tools. However, before we get uh, into the technical demo of that and showing you the capabilities of these Zen Estimate Concrete Tools, let me tell you about Zentech Consultants here for a second. Zentech Consultants, we primarily work with architectural, engineering, and construction firms to educate, support, and consult on all the different types of software they need to know for this complex industry. We are Microsoft Premier Partners, Bluebeam Partners, Autodesk Providers, Procore Certified Consultants, and so much more. We strive to be your trusted technology partner from initial needs to long-term support and training for your staff. And after that intro, I'm gonna open up Bluebeam here, and I'm gonna tell you guys about our newest uh, Zen Estimate Tools Concrete. Uh, just like our other Zen Estimate Tools, we have both Steel and HVAC. Uh, our Zen Estimate Concrete Tools contain over 16 tool sets here. And there are well over 200 tools uh, separated out throughout each of these here. We're going to go over some of these basic tools along with some of the more advanced functionality uh, that you should be using within Bluebeam and, uh, while utilizing our tools here. Uh, first, we just have is our concrete areas and volumes. And I've already placed a couple of these on my drawing right here. Uh, so we just have normal strength, reinforced, and lightweight concrete over here. But as you can see here, there are you know more than a dozen different types of, of volume tools for our concrete. Basically, any, any mass produced or any common types of concrete you will encounter out in the field. Up next, we have just a small tool set here for footings and foundations. Uh, so... Basically some linear foot. We have both strip and strap footings here, stepped footings as well. I do want everyone to be aware of some of the limitations within Bluebeam though. Uh, just due to the wide uh, engineering of footings and elevation changes and whatnot, it is incredibly difficult to uh, provide a volume off of a footing. So please be aware of that when uh, going into this. We also have raft footings and our raft foundations, I should say, and just pile footings, uh, which as a, is a count object. Then we get into the concrete walls. Again, these are all pretty much self-explanatory. These are all linear uh, feet tools. Um, six, uh, six inches, eight inches, going all the way up to 18 inches, and we even have a six inch shotcrete wall. Um, Again, very simple, just linear tools. I'll show just one of the six inch ones here and I'll do an 18 inch just underneath it. Uh, you'll see that the line's a little bit thicker um, and when we get into our custom columns, it'll actually provide a total amount of concrete you'll need for that. So I'll be showing you guys that here momentarily. We have our piers and columns, all for concrete. I've already placed a whole bunch of 12-inch uh, square columns throughout my drawing here just in, in kind of random locations. And again, with all of these count tools that we have uh, for our piers and columns, these are going to calculate the volume that you will, uh, will need for them after you put in a depth. Let's move on to our curb and gutter. Unfortunately, this drawing does not have any uh, any uh, site work or exterior, so I've kind of just made up a little area over here. Um, so first, we have all of our linear feet for our curb types, along with if you're doing any of those barrier curbs, uh, we provided and created a count object for you to count all of those on any of your site and civil plans. We have our retaining walls, and these are very similar to our concrete uh, walls previously discussed. I did a little demonstration right here. Again, we don't have any civil documents on this particular file here, uh, but I included the concrete retaining wall. That is this tool right here, but we can see we have stone, CMU, 
and just other types that you may encounter along with any type of drainage pipe and filter fabric. Up next, we have count objects for our embed plates and anchor bolts. So each of these, if you zoom in a little bit, uh, do provide the sizing on top of the count object. So I just placed a 3 8 uh, embed plate down. Uh, but we also have counts for anchor bolts. This particular drawing, this, this floor plan, you, you probably wouldn't count um, anchor bolts like this. You probably look at a detail, so I just have them floating out here. Uh, but you can do count your embed plates, do a checklist with them, make sure they're all installed and uh, ordered, and that you have them all on site. Up next, we have all of our concrete finishes. And again, I just did a couple of them here. We just have you know, a couple of epoxy finishes in these two rooms, polished finish. And again, no site work, but I just put a, a stenciled kind of sidewalk outside. Uh, this is demonstrated in square feet. Uh, as you would probably, uh, not probably, you would use the other concrete areas and volumes tool to get any type of volumes that would be required. Again, we have grinding. We have anything from underlayments as well. Again, this is just going to give you a, a basic square footage. It's not going to give you the volume and so much more within here. And then we get into our concrete beams. And I'll show you what all of these look like right here. We have our four basic. We have a rectangular continuous. Uh, we have just a rectangular concrete. We have a cantilever. And we have a T-concrete bean. Each of these are uh, both available in a linear foot and as a count object for anything vertical. Then we get into our concrete lintels, very similar to our uh, concrete beams up above. Each of these have both a linear foot tool that goes along with it and a count object. So please be aware of that. Uh, we have both our solid and our U lintels. So the most common types of lintels available uh, within the industry that we see installed. Then we have all of our joints, waterproofing, and insulation tools. So covers both your common expansion and control joints. We have PVC water stop as well. And even if you need some rigid insulation, I already have some on this wall up here, uh, you can certainly you know, get your linear foot of rigid foam board that you would need. And we have spray foam, injection, and other different types of water stopping as well. Within our tools, we also have different types of a fabric and grid reinforcement. So you can see here my normal straight concrete example. Uh, just in this corner, I have a brief section for our welded wire fabric. And again, we have all the most common types that you will encounter. Um, and if there's any tools that you would like to see added, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, put it in the YouTube comments below. Uh, email us. We'll have an email at the end of this uh, video. Or again, just reach out to us on our website. You know, we, up to, uh, we update all of our tools every single year uh, with some of the most recent updates or again, what our uh, customers want to see. And then we have our forms and stakes. These are just linear feet and count objects. I've done a few, an example right here. So again, we would just simply put in a two by 12 wood form. I'll just put a random line right here. And depending on how often you need your stakes separated, you can certainly do that. These squares just represent a design, uh, a line type. They aren't to scale or anything like that. You can certainly get the scale if you would like and modify that, uh, but that is not the intended use for uh, this particular tool. So again, we have our most common two by four, six, eight, twelve 12 um, wood forms along with metal forms as well. We have 
various types of precast concrete counts, such as concrete stairs, um, hollow core plank. Put some of these on the drawing for us. And a pile. Uh, along with a volume measurement for your precast concrete, any type of slabs, any type of uh, precast cantilever wall, or even any types of precast concrete panel. Within these precast tools, um, we also have set up the property to give you the length measurement per uh, side as well. We have just some basic linear foot and count objects for any type of rebar. Uh, calculation of rebar is uh, practically impossible within Bluebeam Review with its current edition. Uh, just, it's just not possible. Uh, you'd have to calculate that with a third party program such as Excel. Uh, but these do give you some basic tools for design and just basic layout. And if we want a number three rebar, and again, this comes with a count object as well. Lastly, for the tools, we have our various types of pump trucks, and these are all to scale. So when you place them on your drawing, they will be to scale. And even your concrete dumpsters, these are going to be to scale on your drawing as well. So we have a basic 10 yard and 20 yard along with a basic mixer. That covers all of the tools within Zen Estimate Concrete. I wanna show you guys a few other features that we do have. Uh, all of these tools have been assigned layers to go with them. Uh, with, if you don't know what layers are within Bluebeam, uh, you can, show the visibility either on or off. So if I wanted to turn off on my concrete, and each of these are typically by uh, the tool set names. So concrete, for my ankle bolts over here, I got rid of those. My embed plates, any of my lintels. And that's just for visibility if you want to, again, turn them on or off. Lastly, I want to talk about our custom columns. Uh, if you aren't familiar with the custom columns within Bluebeam, they can be incredibly powerful. So let's find our just a normal straight concrete here. Uh, we can type in a PSI. Mind you, um, you can also set a default for this. Uh, we've opted not to do that, but you can set a default PSI for every single type, uh, every single time you put down your normal strength concrete, for example, it can be 4,000 PSI. Uh, same thing if you want, you type in a mixed design name or number, you can certainly do that. And any types of admixtures associated with that concrete. So type D, type A, um, again, these follow the typical uh, ASTM types. And we have our volume. This is just a baseline volume from Blue, uh, Bluebeam. However, our count volumes and our wall volumes are a little bit different. If we type in, let's just say this is 36 inches deep. So three feet deep, uh, it'll actually give you the amount of concrete you'll need. So this is actually a very tiny amount uh, for these 13. Makes sense, it's only, let me uh, add a, another one. Let me just go a little bit deeper here. Uh, as you can see, it will eventually increase. If I do a larger one here, such as our, go to this. You can just do a 36 column here. It's a square column. 
And if I just make this, again, 36 inches, it'll give you the exact count that you need. Wall volume can also provide the concrete cubic yards that you will need for a concrete wall. Again, you'll just have to type in some uh, numbers here, whether it be the depth or else. Um, all of our tools, or at least not uh, all the area and volume tools, uh, you can also select a drop down for any type of finish. Uh, you saw that we do have tools for each of these, an area tool as well. However, if you wanted to do a drop down, uh, instead of redoing the uh, measurement, you can do a drop down along with any rebar types that you may want. And if there is a rebar template number that you will be using. Lastly, we do have just some basic information again that you can fill in such as unit price and it will provide the uh, the cost for you. So this is just nine cubic yards times 20 per you know cubic yard here and we have $180. Uh, we have detail number that you can type in if there's any type of detail. There's detail four on A405. Should you want to get into the detail a little bit more. We get into our retaining wall here. We just add another one. Get into our retaining wall type here. We have a gravity piling or cantilever or anchor, uh, anchored retaining wall. So again, whatever choice you would like to select. And when we get into our anchor bolts, uh, which are currently hidden on our drawing, so let me re-enable those. And select one of them. Uh, you can select the anchor bolt type. Uh, this dropdown for your anchor bolt type is not available on other count tools. So let me zoom in here for you guys. As you can see here, I have this, this orange one selected this mechanical embed. And again, I could select what type it is. However, if I go over to my uh, beams here, you're not gonna be able to select an anchor bolt type for those. And same thing for the finish. You don't see anything for our cantilevers, but if you go over to our uh, embed, I mean our anchor bolt, you can select if it's black, galvanized, or painted. The rest of these columns over here are just for various formulas. You don't need to worry about those. Uh, they do have to be shown. And that's all about the Zen Estimate Concrete tools. Again, if you guys have any questions at any time, you can always reach out to us on our website. Uh, give us a phone call or again, leave a comment in the description below and we will answer uh, any of your questions uh, that you may have and look forward from hearing from you.